Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough, and here is a mini dose of Dr. Debbie where I'm sharing tips, suggestions, strategies, and sometimes just motivation to have you move past your betrayal once and for all. Hi there. So the other day I did a video and I said, if you have a request of something you want me to teach you, something I, I can share as it relates to helping you heal physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually from betrayal, let me know because I want to bring what you need to this, to this podcast. So someone wrote, and I, and I found it so interesting because this is something I hear a lot and, and I may have touched on it in different episodes, but I I really want to talk about it. And what she was asking about was when you're moving towards rebuilding something new, the guilt that you feel, the judgment all of it. How do you handle that? So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Let's start with this. You know, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you're rebuilding with someone who has done the work, because if there is a recipe for repeat betrayals, it's, and you, you've heard me share this, it's no consequences for the betrayer. I've seen two things when this is the case Number one, a further deterioration of the relationship. Number two, when this is the case, the betrayed uh, becomes physically sick. And this was the most physically sick group out of the three groups that I studied who did not heal, the ones where the betrayer had very little consequences. Now, it was for a number of reasons. It was they, they, it was, they were uh, financially afraid. You know, they were, it was a financial fear thing. It was fear of change. It was not wanting to break up a family. It was religion. uh, Religious reasons was a big one. So there are so many reasons why they just chose to rebuild. Now, I'm not here to judge you, but when that's the case, I want you to, to take a look at the price you are paying. Are you sick? Are you Uh, continuing to struggle? Do you live in a state of anxiety and hypervigilance? Has trust not been rebuilt and you're just always worried that it's just going to happen again? You're just going to catch them again? Look at the price you're paying for that um, and see how long have you been paying that price? I mean, really assess all of it too, because so often, you know, we don't even kind of look at what we're what we're doing. We're just trying to keep our head above water, right? But when you really look at it, what what is the price you're paying? And then, you know, here's the thing too. Take a look at this if you have kids. Your kids are watching and they're learning. And what message are they learning? What are they learning about how to be within a relationship? How do you navigate a relationship? There are so many lessons. I am not suggesting any of this is easy. You know, I've been through it, but what we do all day long within the PBT Institute is really help you navigate this. So you come out uh, physically, mentally, emotionally stronger. And what you'll also always hear me say is never make a decision from a low place. The same decision you make when you're in stage three may be a very different decision you make in stage four, a very different decision you make in stage five. So I recommend move through the stages, get to stage five. So your decisions come from a place of clarity and strength. Okay. So having said that, let's put that aside now, because there's a whole other category of rebuilding when nothing has really changed. And, and that's, that's for you to navigate and decide if that makes sense to you. Now, here's the thing too. Betrayal really lends itself to this complete and total shakeup of not just the betrayed, but the betrayer too. And when that's the case, they have as big of a wake up call as the betrayed. And now I know there are some people saying, oh, cheaters don't change and all this stuff. I can tell you they can. And it's so interesting because our rebuild program is for the betrayer. Now, Of course, this is not for the betrayer who has no remorse, no regret, no, you know, no intention of doing anything different. These are the betrayers who realize I just shattered the the heart and the trust of the person I love the most and the person who loves me the most. What in the world was I thinking 
what can I do to make it right and become someone I'm proud of? That's the person who joins our rebuild program. And for them, they're working with our coaches. They have their own programs, but they're working with me too. And I am literally giving them the playbook. Say this, do this. Don't ever say this. Don't ever do that. And it really makes a difference. And they're, they're healing. And sometimes they're doing the work and the betrayed uh, is struggling so terribly. And the betrayer is growing uh, and changing more quickly than the betrayed. So we have to bring them both back up to speed. Anyway, let's assume you're in a position where the betrayer absolutely gets it. They realize this was the biggest mistake they've ever made. They want to do everything to make it right. And you're willing, you're doing your own work. If you're not doing your work, then that's not, that's not fair to either of you. But let's say you decide, okay, I'm going to do the work and I'm going to move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. They're going to do their work and we're going to, we'll see what happens here. Now, as hard as that is, because you're confronting everything, you also have to deal with everything externally too. all the people in your life. How do you, how do you move through all of that? But even, even before that, you know, think about this to truly, truly rebuild you're creating an entirely new identity. You're taking all the parts you love and you're leaving behind everything that no longer serves. So if the old you didn't have any boundaries, the new you does. If the old you didn't stick up for yourself, the new you does. If the old you went along with things that didn't feel right or comfortable, the new you has a different way about it, about going about that. So you're it's a moment by moment thing because every time you're about to say something, do something, you want to think, is this what I want this new version of me to do? Is this representative of this new version of me? If not, I'm letting it go. If it is bringing it along and, and creating this and taking it with me. So it is exhausting. And when I say, you've heard me say hard now, easy later, easy now, hard later, take your pick. It's one of those two. It's because you're assessing and reassessing and creating everything along the way. That's what I'm talking about when I say hard now. That's the work. That's the work. So, you know, you may have even been one of those people. And I know I was years ago when I knew someone was getting back together with someone who betrayed. I had all kinds of judgment. I had all kinds of things to think and say. And I realized, having been through it myself, it's actually harder. It's harder to, and you know, I have, I've had my two experiences. With my family betrayal, I healed myself. I moved along. With my husband, we crashed and burned. That was the end of it. I did my own healing. On his own, he did his own healing. And then as two transformed people, uh, we married each other again. New rings, new vows, new dress, and our four kids is our bridal party. That time was excruciating. And I have an episode where I, I was talking about my own personal story. So if that interests you, go, go back and watch that, listen to that episode. But when you're rebuilding, it, it is harder because you're, you look at what you're confronting. You're so hurt. Trust has been so shattered. You don't feel safe. Think about it. This was the person you trusted the most. This was the person who said, okay, you know, when the, when the world's crazy, I got you. And then that's the person who's doing the hurting. So that level of safety and that level of trust is completely shattered. How do you, with your fragile heart, hand that back over to that same person again? I'm going to stop it right there because I'll tell you, it's not the same person. So that same person doesn't exist anymore, just as the old you doesn't exist, the old version of them doesn't exist. And again, we're, we're assuming this is someone who totally gets it and is willing to do the work to rebuild right. That's who I'm talking about. So is it a process? Yeah, of course. And it's, it takes time and it takes a tremendous amount of work. And I see it. I see it with our rebuild members. I see it with our reclaim, our betrayed members every day within the PBT Institute. And it was what I did personally myself and many of our coaches. Uh, and many of them healed themselves and moved along. It wasn't a fit for them to rebuild with, with their partner, which is totally 
okay. If that partner has no intention of changing, then why in the world would you take that on again uh, when you know it's not safe, it's not, uh, you're not being valued or it's not in your best interest, right? So, but let's, let's get back to this because the question, the question uh, was, what do you do, you know, as far as that judgment? And you feel so guilty and people don't get it and all of these things. Well, I understand. And I understand because not only did I go through it, but I'm out there. I'm, you know, I'm (laughs) in the public. And, and this is, think about as far as gossip. Is there another topic that people like to gossip about more than betrayal? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. So you need to be a little thicker skinned, which is very hard. I'm a very sensitive person. And that was something, that was a reason why in the beginning of PBT, I was talking about the study and what the study proved and what the study learned. And I'll tell you, it, it takes a good coach, right? And I'll never forget the day my coach looked at me and I was talking about the study, talking about the study. And he just points his finger at me and he says, stop hiding behind your effing study already. And that was the day I said, okay, time to, time to put my own insecurity and fear and everything aside and, and share this message for the people who need to hear it. So will judgment be there? Yep. It just will. So fighting it and trying to act like it's not going to be there is just going to be, it's just frustrating. It's just going to be so frustrating for you. What I, what I have found, and maybe this can help you is be careful who you share your deepest heart with, right? There are some people who just want to know for their own gossip, for their own curiosity. Be careful of that. But there are other people who really, really want to be there for you. Like I'll, I'll never forget uh, back in the day when I shared, at first I didn't share with some of my closest friends and I'll never forget sharing with one of them. And she got angry with me. And I was like, oh no, this is terrible. Why? Because she was my friend and I wasn't being honest with her. Our friendship was supposed to be based on we're there for each other. And she didn't have an opportunity to be there for me because I was so ashamed and I felt like I was going to be so judged. So lesson learned, right? I learned that lesson, but I also learned that lesson of there are some people I didn't want to share with because I had a feeling it was just about curiosity. Here, I'll take it to a, an extreme level. I remember, and this has happened many times, I, you know, I'm on a lot, of, a lot of other people's podcasts and their shows and that kind of thing. And, and there was one host who was asking questions and wanted the dirty details. That was exactly how she asked it. Tell us the dirty details. And, and you know, so of course my stomach like just turned and, and I remember saying something like, I don't really think that's something that your listeners need to know, but what I can share is, and I went blah, 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 like into the teaching. I'm happy to teach. I'm happy to share a bit about the story so that you know what you can do with it. I'm happy to talk about the transformation and I'm happy to share enough. So you realize I've been there and I get it, but the dirty details, no. No. So if you come across someone like that, no, you don't have to share. You share to whatever extent you feel comfortable. But as far as that judgment, that judgment's coming. You can't control it. You, you can't, you know, there's really nothing you can do about it. And and I'll never, I think it was Wayne Dyer just loved everything about his work. And he said, what you, it was something like, what you think of me is none of my business. And isn't that so true? So if that's what you're worried about, it's, it's zapping tremendous energy that you need for your own healing. Since you can't control it, look at it as it's almost like I'm getting aggravated and annoyed with gravity. Throw something up, it's coming down. That's just the way gravity works. So can you be angry that that's what's going to happen? You can, but is it a good use of your time? Probably not. So since you can't change that, then minimize your exposure to those that judge or, and that's also why within the PBT Institute, we, we created based on, again, based on the research, you need support, but you need a specific 
type of support. You need people who get it and you need people who lift and inspire. So that's all that goes on in our forums, in our communities, because you need to know you're not alone. You're not crazy. And we get it. So being in an environment like that, at least you feel you're not struggling and suffering in silence. That's another way to get sick when you're just keeping this to yourself and struggling and not sharing this and wondering, am I crazy? What do I do with this? Why is it impacting me to the level that it is? I mean, these are, these are all big questions that you bring to our coaches and our, and our community and get some real answers to, but no, you're not crazy. You're not alone and you can heal from all of it. And that's what happens when you move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. Now, Guilt. This is another emotion. Guilt is one of the most useless emotions. It really is. Because think about it. Guilt just makes you feel badly. Does it do anything? No, it makes you feel bad. So here's what I recommend. If you're going to feel something, have a plan at the end of it. Let it give you an insight. Let it give you a deeper perspective. Let it give you an, an, a, a, a nugget of awareness. That's time and energy well spent. But the problem with guilt is it just makes you feel bad. And then let's say you're an emotional eater. Now you feel bad. So what do you do? You gravitate towards food. You binge. Now you feel bad. That's a recipe for another binge. So the feeling bad never leads to anything good, or it leads to uh, just talking badly about yourself, that inner critic that's just criticizing you and just so down on you. There's so much of that already. What you need when you're healing from betrayal is to be your own best friend. And if you wouldn't say it to someone else, why in the world would you say it to yourself? And I always um, recommend also, and this is so easy if you have kids. And if you don't, just imagine anyone you love. If anyone you love came to you with the same exact thing, you'd be pouring on the love and the compassion and being there for them. Well, what are you giving to yourself, right? So if you're feeling judged, if you're feeling guilty, what would you want to hear? Give that to yourself and then um, be very mindful of who you're sharing with. So as far as just to kind of wrap this up, when it comes to rebuilding, rebuilding is hard enough Make sure you're feeling safe, you're feeling valued. Do the work, you do the work to move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough, to show up powerfully, effectively in that stage four, in that stage five. So you really know what you're working with. If your partner is willing to do the work, they're going to show up powerfully and differently too. Now they have a, a different role in this. They have to do their own work to heal whatever led them to make those kind of choices. And they have to be there for you in the way you need. Again, it's a, there's a dance and, and that's something that they learn uh, in our rebuild program if they're ready and willing and able to do that. But it's a journey and it's not an easy journey. They're doing their work. You're doing your work. You're coming together as, as you grow as two transformed people, two very different people. But as hard as that work is, you want to kind of put yourself in a bit of a cocoon because someone on the outside doesn't, you know, they may not know, they don't get it. And they may just want to, uh, they just want to see you okay. So they may minimize it, or they may say something that is so hurtful you know, they may not realize it or whatever. So you have to be so careful who you share this with. Again, if, if someone hasn't been through it, and that could be a, a coach, a counselor, a therapist, a psychologist, a psychiatrist. I mean, you know how many people come into the PBT Institute with therapy trauma because either that coach or counselor hasn't been through it, so they don't understand, or they're endlessly unpacking their story without a strategic plan to move towards the next stage. If there's a recipe for stage three, it's that. Uh, but that we see that all the time. Anyway, do the work to move through the stages. If your partner is doing the work, they'll become someone very different as well. Y you meet up as two very different people. As far as the judgment, it's going to be there. So the stronger you are, the more you can deal with it. But uh, my recommendation, be careful who you share your your heart with. Uh, the ones worthy and deserving who are there for you, who get it, 
take your, you know, take your time to the level that you want to share. But as far as the, the dirty details, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel anybody really needs to know that. What's the purpose? Like, honestly, what's, when you think about it, what's the purpose in sharing that? You know, I remember, I think it was Carolyn Mace who said, you want to speak from the scar and not the wound. And the scar happens in stage five. The wound is in stages two and three. So move through the stages. So you get to that place where you feel stronger, you feel more confident, uh, and you realize how beautiful, loving, worthy, deserving you are. So I hope that helped and I'll see you next time. You need the right tools, support, and the right community to move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. And we have all that within the PBT Institute. So join us at the PBT, as in post-betrayal transformation, thepbtinstitute.com. There's a version of you who's so confident, healthy, peaceful, and happy on the other end of your healing. And we can't wait to help you get there. We got you. Thanks for listening. And here's to your breakthrough.